coming up on today's episode of Airborne Affordable Flyers, Bands web portal to support replacement of defective parts, MWLSA Expo rocked, EAA volunteer pilot celebrates flying 10,000 young eagles. And I'm your host, Holland Lee. Welcome to Airborne Affordable Flyers, our programming designed to help you get and stay in aviation as affordably as possible. Overseen by the editorial staff of the award-winning Sportplane Resource Guide, we know well the challenges faced by today's sport flyers, and we're here to help you enjoy flying to the utmost. Let's get into today's stories. Vans Web Portal to Support Replacement of Defective Parts Oregon-based Vans Aircraft is developing a web portal by which customers in receipt of cracked aircraft parts may report such and arrange to take delivery of replacement components. Customers visiting the portal will be presented lists of the heretofore problematic laser-cut parts from which they may specify the replacements they require. The portal will also afford Vans customers opportunity to select non-laser-cut parts at no additional charge. Customers requiring replacements of punched parts will be able to request and view discounted prices for subject parts via the portal. Vans anticipates the scope and volume of parts requested by customers will allow the company to refine its production schedules for requested parts and determine shipping timeframes. Once part volumes and production and delivery timing are calculated as functions of the number of replacement parts requested, Vans asserts it will pass data pertaining to such along to its customers. Additionally, Vans, for purpose of collecting data and opinions germane to its aircraft kits, will presently disseminate a survey among the company's quick-build customers. Vans stated, quote, Our engineering team's testing process continues and significant progress has been made to include additional fatigue tests, finite element analysis, and destructive load tests. We will communicate additional information about the testing next week, end quote. And after the break, tentative date set for Affordable Flying Expo 2025. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Throughout the globe, Piper Aircraft has hand-selected the very best in company representation, service, and support. From first inquiry to acquisition to product support, Piper Aircraft ownership is seamless and worry-free. Piper Aircraft authorized dealers, factory trained, factory connected. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Tentative date set for Affordable Flying Expo 2025. The upcoming Affordable Flying Expo to be held on the grounds of the Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo campus and utilizing some of the best facilities available to any sport aviation event now has a tentative date, though like all things may change as details firm up. Currently scheduled for January 9th through 11th of 2025, the Expo has received strong early support for a plan that emphasizes safety, education, and access to lots of demo flying, with more exciting features awaiting announcements in the coming weeks. New cowling being developed for Aeropup. Aeropup USA's new two-place stole high wing made a solid showing at the Midwest LSA Expo with the prototype of a new cowling that should be able to accept a number of different engine selections. Aeropup USA's Don Fielden has been crafting the new cowling for the last few weeks and hopes to pull new cowlings off a mold shortly. The 100-knot cruiser has a stall speed of 36 knots and a number of them are already flying all over the world. More info to come. Young Eagles Air Academy Registrations Open The EAA has opened reservations for its summer teen education programs for 2024. The EAA Air Academy in Oshkosh, Wisconsin offers 12 to 18-year-olds an aviation-focused getaway with three different skill and experience levels available. The first, the Young Eagles Camp, is appropriate for ages 12 to 13 and runs for two four-day spans in June. The second level is the EAA Basic Air Academy for ages 14 to 15, held at the tail end of June to the second week in July. The highest level, the EAA Advanced Air Academy, targets the 16 to 18 crowd with sessions running in late July to early August. 
Michael Whitaker nominated for FAA Administrator position. More than 17 months after the resignation of the FAA's last permanent administrator, the Washington, D.C. bureaucracy appears to have identified a suitable, ostensibly qualified candidate for the job. A number of aviation associations have already issued statements lauding the Biden administration's nomination of Michael Whitaker to serve as the next permanent administrator of the FAA. Whitaker, an attorney, longtime aviation industry professional, and private pilot, served as deputy FAA administrator from 2013 through 2016. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Midwest LSA Expo rocked. The ANN crew had an immensely successful trip to Mount Vernon, Illinois for the very busy 15th annual Midwest LSA Expo. Though it's not the biggest show in the world, there was still lots of flying, a friendly atmosphere, and a volunteer staff that could not be beat. Close to 40 vendors filled the easily accessed airport ramp, and nearly 200 demo flights were safely executed. Overall traffic was estimated to be up some 20% over previous such events. We had the chance to test seven aircraft, five for pretty much the first time, and came away impressed with the state of the industry. On the high-performance side, the gorgeous taper-wing scissor tail proved to be fairly speedy while offering a stability profile that adapted well to cross-country. Texas Aircraft's Colt was a surprise with an exceedingly impressive stability and control profile, while the delightful Aeroproc Day 32 did just about everything well and faster than we expected. There was also a chance to get some serious airtime in the Zenith Super Duty with 205 horsepower that rivaled the Space Shuttle. And finally, getting a hold of the Rams outbound showed off its very rugged good nature and pretty decent in-flight visibility. We'll have much more to say about each aircraft in upcoming Airborne episodes. And after these messages, EAA Volunteer Pilot celebrates flying 10,000 young eagles. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Flying is my entire life. It's all that I've ever known. I've relied on Hartzell propellers since about 1995. Hartzell means much more than a propeller. It's a relationship. When you hear the phrase, built on honor, they care about us as pilots, they care about our community, and they care about the product they build. It's such a proud honor to fly behind that propeller. Welcome back. EAA Volunteer Pilot celebrates flying 10,000 young eagles. Longtime EAA Chapter 252 member and volunteer pilot Fred Stadler of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, has become the first individual to fly 10,000 young people as part of the EAA Young Eagles program. Mr. Stadler, whose involvement in the Young Eagles initiative dates back to the year 2000, made the milestone flight from the EAA Aviation Museum's Pioneer Airport on August 26, 2023. EAA CEO and Chairman Jack Pelton stated, quote, Fred's remarkable accomplishment is indicative of the dedication of our Young Eagles volunteers to make a difference and build the future of flight. There are so many young pilots today who got their start when an EAA member pilot provided that first flight, igniting a spark that became a career for many. Fred and all those EAA members have earned our congratulations and sincere thanks for their efforts, along with the call for other aviators to join us in flying Young Eagles." End quote. Many of Mr. Stadler's Young Eagles flights have been operated from the EAA Aviation Museum's Pioneer Airport, a seasonal facility that recreates the feel of a 1930s airfield. In addition to his efforts on behalf of the Young Eagles program, Mr. Stadler has flown the Pioneer Airport's travel air and swallow biplanes, thereby becoming the institution's de facto historian on those aircraft. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.